Now we will discuss the second point, which is the important acts and deeds to be done during the first 10 days of Dhulhijja. I have enumerated 35 important points. Some people have listed 10, 20, 30, some more. There are hundreds of good deeds you can do. To make the list a bit shorter, I have enumerated 35 important deeds and acts to be done during the first 10 days of the Lijja. And whenever I enumerate, I try and enumerate the ones which are the fard on the top. Then coming with the highly recommended sunnah and then the other sunnah later on. That's my policy. And when I repeat the good deeds, I also repeat the faraiz which are supposed to be done daily. Because what are the faraiz daily has to be done first. Then you can talk about the sunnah te mokada. Then you can talk about the sunnah te gar mokada. So this is the order I follow whenever I list the important acts or deeds to be done. So number one, the most important act during the first end of the Dillajah is that you should offer Salah in congregation in the mosque. All the five daily Salah in congregation in a mosque. It is a fard, especially for the Muslim men. For the women, there are exceptions. And when I'm listing these 35 important points, it is for all types of Muslim, whether you're more practicing Muslim, whether you're moderate practicing Muslim or less practicing Muslim. If you are a less practiced Muslim, you will see to it that you will do as much as these good deeds as possible. If you are moderate, what you will do, you will try and do all of these 35 good deeds. If you are already a practicing Muslim, then what you will do, you will see to it that you will increase the intensity of ibadah. So these days are meant for all the Muslims, whether you are less practicing, moderate practicing or more practicing. If you are less practicing, you see to it that you do as much as possible of all the good deeds. If you are moderate, you see to it that you do all the good deeds and increase the intensity. If you are already a good practicing Muslim, doing all the farais, see to it that you increase the intensity of the mustahab. Also do the gair mustahab. If you are moderate and you are doing the farais, then you do the sunnah mokadah. If you are a highly practicing Muslim, then besides the faraif and the sunnah mokadah, you do the sunnah gair mokadah. If you are already doing the sunnah gair mokadah, what do you do? You increase the intensity. So during these two important days, one is the first ten days of Dhulijjah and the other are the days in the month of Ramadan. It's very important that you increase your intensity of your ibadah. So the first important deed to be done during the first day of the Lijjah is offer salah in congregation all five times in the mosque. Number two, if you have not performed hajj, you should perform hajj. If it's further on you. If you have the means and if you have the health and the wealth and if you have not performed hajj, you should perform hajj, it's further on you. If you have already performed hajj, and if you can do it again, it is mustab, it is sunnah, it is encouraged. But we know since last one and a half year, we have this pandemic of the coronavirus. And last year, hardly approximately 1,000 were permitted to Hajj. This year, alhamdulillah, the Saudi government has announced they will allow 60,000 Muslims to do Hajj, out of which 15,000 would be Saudi national, and the balance 45,000 would be the foreigners who are living in Saudi Arabia who already have the Kama. They will not allow any outside people to enter who are not residents of Saudi Arabia. But those who are already residents of Saudi Arabia, they will allow 45,000 people and they will see to it, they will allow from all the different nationalities depending upon the percentage they are present. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he next year solve this problem of the pandemic and again the Muslims would be able to do in large numbers, inshallah, in millions like what we used to do two years before. The third important act and deed is that you should abstain from all the haram acts, from the major sins as well as the minor sins. And if you're a good Muslim, not doing any major sins, alhamdulillah, there are some minor sins that Muslims 
normally do, unknowingly, unknowingly. See to it that during these 10 days you abstain from all the sins, not in the major sins, but each and every of the minor sins. The fourth is that you should fast during Yom al Arafah, the ninth Dulhaj. And as I mentioned earlier, it will expiate your sins of the previous year and the coming year. The fifth is fast during all the first nine days of Dulhijjah. And that is a highly recommended sunnah. Sixth is that if you have the means, you should sacrifice during Yom al Nahar, that is Eid al Hada, the tenth day of Dulhijjah. If you have the means and Allah has given you capacity, sacrifice an animal on this day. The seventh is that say the tasbih, that is subhanallah, say the tahmeed, that is alhamdulillah, say the ta'leel, that is la ilaha illallah, and say the takbir, Allah Akbar, as much as possible during all the ten days of the rajah. We can recite together subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa la akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa la akbar. You can recite this as much as possible throughout the day. The eighth is that you should go out in the marketplace and say the takbir out loudly so that people are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they also repeat it on their own. And the takbir out as I had mentioned earlier is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. As much as possible, go out in the marketplace, tell to the others, remind others to do zikr, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is more sawab than distributing gold or silver in the marketplace. The ninth is praying the tahajjud salah in the last one third of the night and do dua and ask for forgiveness during this last one third of the night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the prayer of the maximum. The tenth is pray the sunnat e that is, there are 12 sunnat e in which the Prophet said, if you pray these 12 rakat, you will enter Jannah and have a house close to the house of the Prophet. And the 12th sunnat e the two raka sunnah before the Fajr Salah, the 2 plus 2, 4 raka sunnah before the Dohar Salah, 2 rakat sunnah after the Dohar Salah, the 2 raka sunnah after the Maghrib Salah, and 2 raka sunnah after the Isha Salah. There are total 12 sunnat e in the full day. Also offer the Salat duha And the Salat duha is offered approximately when Sheikh Utaymi was asked which is the right time. He said immediately about 20 minutes after the sunrise till about 10 to 15 minutes before the duha time. You can offer the Salat duha any time between this time. You can offer two rakat. The Prophet said two rakat as much as you can. But the Prophet most of the time you offered four rakat. So preferably four rakat, you can even offer two rakat. The Prophet even offered eight rakat during Fatih Makkah before that. But preferable is four rakat, which was usually practice of the Prophet. And the better time to offer the Prophet said is when the camel can feel the heat of the sand. So it is preferable to offer after the midpoint between the Fajr and between the Dohar. This is the better time. But you can offer any time. 20 minutes after the sunrise and if you offer immediately after sunrise it's called an ishraq but the better time is after the midpoint as is the sunnah of the prophet the 12th point is that you should do dua before breaking your fast the 13th is do as much as dua throughout the 10 days of the dulija and do not miss doing dua during the friday of these 10 days, the first 10 days of Dhulhijjah. When our Friday comes, whether once or twice, see to it that you offer in that one hour after Sar Salah, before Maghrib, this is an important time, one of the prescribed times for doing dua. The 14 days, do zikr of Allah as much as possible throughout the 10 days of Dhulhijjah. Point number 15, read the Quran. And if you don't understand Arabic, Along with Arabic, read the translation of the Quran in the language you understand the best. Point number 16, ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these first 10 days of the Lijja. Point number 17, give as much as charity as possible besides the zakat. 
If you have given your zakat, good. If you have not, see to it, you give it. But besides zakat, give as much as charity as possible. Point number 18, do as many good deeds as possible. Point number 19, do taskia and nafs every day during these 10 days of the Lijjah. Point number 20, recite the Masnoon Dua of the beloved Prophet. If you are not reciting, start reciting in these 10 days. If you recite few, start reciting more or increase the number of Masnoon Dua. For example, when you enter the mosque, there's a dua. When you come out of the mosque, there's a dua. When you enter the toilet, there's a dua. When you come out of the toilet, there's a dua. When you wear a dress, there's a dua. For most of the acts, there are duas. So see to it, you do the masnoon duas. Point number 21, do as many sunnas of the Prophet. For example, while you drink water, see to it, you sit and drink water. It is a very important sunnah of the Prophet. When you wear a footwear, see to it that you wear the footwear on the right leg first. When you remove the footwear, see to it you remove your left leg first. When you enter the mosque, enter with the right leg. When you exit the mosque, you enter with the left leg. When you enter the toilet, enter with the left leg. When you exit the toilet, you exit the toilet with the right leg. When you are wearing a dress, a shirt, put your right hand first. When you are removing the shirt, remove the left hand first. When you are wearing a trouser, put the right leg first. When you're removing the trouser, remove your left leg first. These are the various sunnahs of the Prophet. Do as many sunnahs as you can. If you're not doing, start doing it. If you're doing few, do more. If you're doing more, increase it as much as possible during these 10 days of Dhulijjah. During these first 10 days of Dhulijjah, you should see to it that a good deed should increase as compared to the other days of the year. It should be more. If you are reading few duas, read more duas. If you are reading only the fars, start reading the Sunnah Mokadah. If you are reading only Sunnah Mokadah and Fard, start reading Sunnah Gair Mokadah. If you are reading all these three, increase your salah, increase your dua, increase your asking for forgiveness. 22. Read the authentic hadith of the Prophet, the Sahih Hadith. You have the Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and the Silsila Sayyid of Albani, the Sayyid Hadith from Abu Dawud, from Nisai, from Ibn Majah, and so forth. And there's also a new compilation done by Sheikh Ziyarab and Azmi of Jami Hamid. We have accumulated all the Hadiths Sahih and removed the duplicate, which is approximately 16,546 Hadith. All the Sahih. So once you read this, you can easily say that you have read all the Sahih Hadith, irrespective whether it's in Bukhari, Muslim, etc., without duplicating, so it's easier. So if you read the Jami Kamil, it's a good thing to do. Point number 23. You should forgive people's fault. Forgive the faults of others. Whatever faults that people do around you, rather than keeping in your mind or taking a grudge, forgive it. If you forgive people's fault, Allah will forgive you whether it be of your family members, whether it be of your staff, whether it be of your people around you, forgive as many faults as possible of the others. Point number 24, do Islam with your other Muslims. Point number 25, do Dawah with the non-Muslims. Point number 26 is that you offer Sunnate Aghair Muqqadah. There are total 10 sunnat gair muqadda. It is 2 raka sunnah after the Dohar Salah, 2 plus 2, 4 raka sunnah before the Asar Salah, 2 raka sunnah before the Maghrib Salah, and 2 raka sunnah before the Isha Salah. So there are 10 sunnat gair muqadda. If you offer this, Alhamdulillah, during all the 10 days of the Lija, the 28th point is attend as many lectures and programs and courses of the authentic scholars to increase your knowledge in Islam. And today being a pandemic is there throughout the world, attending live programs will be difficult. You can go to the next point, that is the 29th point. You can watch the videos, the video recording of the authentic scholars and the authentic orators, whether it be on a learning management system, whether it be on the Facebook, 
whether it be on the YouTube, whether it be on the Alidaya, whether it be on the Peace TV, on various social media platforms. But see to it that these scholars and orators that we're hearing are authentic. Point number 30, hear the audio recordings of the authentic scholars and orators. You may be in the car and traveling. It's a good opportunity. While driving, you can hear the audio. You may be doing some exercise. You may be jogging. At that time, you can hear the lecture and increase your knowledge. Point number 31, read the seerah, the biography of the beloved Prophet Muhammad And one of the good biographies that you can read is the Rahik al Maktoum, the sealed nectar, which is written by Sheikh Safiur Rahman Mubarakpuri. It is one of the best seerah that's available. Point number 32, spend more time with your family. When I spend more time with the family, it doesn't mean that you go out more with them, shopping all the 10 days. Yes, if you want to shop just before Eid and buy them good clothes, etc., no problem. But not all 10 days, not going for outing. When I say spend more time with the family, that along with the family, you read the Quran, you read the Seerah of the Prophet, attend Islamic program of authentic scholars and authentic orators, watch the video recording of authentic orators on various platforms, social media platforms, hear the audio together, spend time, discuss with them, talk to them about the good deeds to be done in the first 10 days of Dhulijjah, about the Sunnah of the Prophet, read the translation of the Quran. This time, you are doing a Venn diagram. Besides doing the Ibadah, you are asking your family to do the Ibadah. And the Prophet said that the best amongst the Muslim is the one who is best to his family, especially his wife. So spend more time with your family and encourage them to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number 33. Do not waste a single minute during all these first 10 days of the Lijjah. Point number 34. Be cheerful and happy during all these four 10 days of the Lijjah. And point number 35. See to it that you behave with the people around you with love, affection, and care. This was, in short, the 35 important acts and deeds to be done during the first 10 days of the religion.